What's up, nerds? So, this is not clickbait. Today we're going to be talking about why I am so damn weak. So I got a comment on my Instagram, uh, and I want to explain why I am so weak. I think it's important to be honest and be transparent about my strength, as well as everything about what I do, about my diet, about my training, everything. So the comment reads, I'm curious, man. I know genetics play a huge role in strength training and hypertrophy in general, but how is it possible for a 180 to 200 pound male with astounding amounts of training knowledge and experience struggles with a 300 pound squat? And this is obviously talking about this lift here, which I posted. Uh, this is 135 kilos, so just under 300 pounds. And then he goes on, I really am not humble bragging, but I hit that for reps at a similar body weight after six months of training from a complete novice. Surely genetics aren't the only thing stopping you from getting your lifts up especially wrapping up half a decade of training. Just curious as to whether you have any plans to rework squat training, possibly, or that's not on your mind at the moment. You probably have gotten this inquiry before, so don't mind me being dumb. I do want to say that this, this guy is not just a hater. Um, uh, I know him, I've talked to him, he's really, really nice. Uh, and I'll, I'll share with you my response. I said, well, there are a few complications. I do have torn labrums in both hips from running which certainly makes things difficult. So I do have torn labrums in both sides. Uh, if I squat really, really deep, uh, especially with a low bar position, I'll feel them for sure. Sometimes I'll even feel them from sumo deadlifting or if I go really deep in a Bulgarian split squat. Anything that puts me into very, very extreme hip flexion under load in that end range of motion, is just gonna tear up my labrums. I've had squat sessions where afterwards I couldn't walk properly for a few days. And you know, I'd love to get my strength up, but if I had the choice between walking properly <laughs> and putting 10 pounds or 10 kilos on my squat, well, I'd prefer to walk. Uh, there is a lot of pain and I'd rather not have surgery or get my hips replaced at 40. Or ever. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'd rather not have any surgeries ever. That's something I don't really want to go through. I also don't have the most favorable leverages for squatting. And this is true. If you look at my femurs, they're pretty long. I'm much, much better at deadlifting. I can actually deadlift 140. This is 140 for 40 reps, rest pause. Uh, that is more than my squat PR. So I can deadlift my squat PR 40 times just because of leverages. Most people can't really do that, but I either have a really good deadlift or a really bad squat, depending on how you look at it. I've deadlifted 10 by 180 kilos, but can only do 10 by 120 kilos in the squat. I'm also, it's also probable that I'm very much slow twitch based on my running background as well. So fiber type, I think it's overrated, but it is certainly a factor. Uh, based on the fact that I'm a pretty decent distance runner, it's probable that I'm uh, more slow twitch, uh, and I'm also a lot better at reps. So if you look at 10 by 120 kilos, that predicts a one rep max in the squat of 160 kilos. But my best is only 135 kilos, and that's simply because I'm a lot better at reps than doing a one rep max. And this isn't from like a lack of practice. I've maxed out a lot of times before and I'm just always better at reps. It's just how it is. I would love to be strong, but I'm just not. Uh, I'm not naturally super explosive or super strong. You know, it's just how it is. Another factor is how I am squatting. So I'm squatting with heels elevated, high bar, I just whacked the camera. Uh, I'm squatting high bar, basically below parallel, if not ass to grass and I'm not squatting powerlifting style, okay? So if I wanted to squat as much weight as possible, I would squat low bar, I would squat sitting my hips back with a wider stance, and I would go just below parallel, like where I get one red light from the judges, okay? So if I wanted to squat for max weight, it would be almost a completely different movement. And if you look at most people who are good at deadlifting and they try to squat as much weight as possible they're going to squat in that way they're going to squat low bar using a lot of uh of hips like uh, lane norton lane norton is a good example he bends over a lot when he squats 
and it's very easy to get lower back issues from this style of squatting. I would personally prefer to avoid this. I don't really like low bar squatting, and so I just don't do it. It's not really something that I want to do, that I really see value in doing. I am not a power lifter. I will never be a world record holding power lifter. That's just not in the cards. If you look at someone like John Hack, he is amazingly strong. He is literally twice as strong as me at most of his lifts. At about the same body weight as me, he squats 722 pounds or 328 kilos. He bench presses 238 kilos or 523 pounds. Uh, he deadlifts 368 kilos or 810 pounds. I mean, all of those are double what I do except for the deadlift. It's just, it's amazing. And guess what? He's always been strong. I mean, when he was 20 years old, he was still totaling 1,500 pounds, whereas I am totaling around 1,000 pounds. So even like when he was basically just getting started, he was totaling about 50% more than me. If you look at any physical or mental trait, it's going to have a bell curve. So most people are going to be in the middle, and then you'll have some people who are below average, some people are, who are above average. Then you'll have the outliers, people who have shit genetics and people who have amazing genetics. John Hack is a total genetic freak. He has amazing genetics for strength. I do not. I would say I have below average genetics for strength. Uh, I am decent at reps, but in terms of one rep max, I am not good. I am definitely not uh, at an advantage. This is not because of discipline. This is not because of hard work. This is not because of determination. I am one of the more disciplined people that I know. Uh, I enjoy working out. It's something that I've tried really, really hard at. And honestly, it sucks. It sucks putting in literally thousands of hours doing something and thousands of hours more learning about it and not being very good at it. It's something that I have a passion for. It's something that I will never stop learning about and I will never stop trying to get better. But there's always gonna be people who are way stronger than me. That's just the reality of the situation. And this sucks, you know? It's tempting to lie about my PRs. It's tempting to use plates that are maybe lighter than the average plates. Um, but I think it's better just to be transparent because I know there's a lot of people who are in my situation. I've had clients who they've also been in a similar situation. I've gotten their questionnaires and they've been training decently for several years and they're not really satisfied with their progress. And you know, that's me to a certain extent. I've been training for a while now and I'm not really satisfied with my progress. And I don't think it's from a lack of knowledge I don't think it's from a lack of effort or, or work ethic. Uh, I think a lot of it is going to be just genetics. And I'm not saying I'm at my limit. I can still get better. But my limit is going to be lower than a lot of people. Now, luckily, I am genetically gifted, uh, at least more genetically gifted, for size. So if you saw these legs, you'd say, okay, for sure he could squat 140 kilos, but I've never done that. Uh, you know, if I said to someone, like, what do you think I bench? They would usually guess a lot more than I actually bench. And, um, you know, I'd rather be stronger than just appearing strong. But that might just be, you know, the result of my frustration with being weak. Um, you know, maybe it's like a grass is greener on the other side of the fence kind of thing. Like if I actually lost all my muscles but was super strong... I would actually prefer what I have now. Um, but, you know, that's just the situation. That's just what it is. And, you know, I'll never be a world record holding power lifter. One interesting thing where I'm sort of in a unique situation is that I am the strongest person at this gym. In fact, I've always been the strongest person at my gym. Um, I've been working out in Chinese gyms for uh, five or six years, and I cannot remember anyone deadlifting more than 180 kilos. 
and I cannot remember or, or I don't think I've ever seen anyone squat honestly more than about 160 kilos and most people don't even squat that's why there's no power rack at this gym because no one freaking squats I had to create my own power rack what kind of BS is this um, so the, the strength standards are very low. And if I didn't have the internet, my ego would be so big. <laughs> um, luckily, I have the internet uh, and people like this commenting to absolutely keep my ego in check because I know that I'm not strong. But if I didn't have that, just based on what I saw around me to compare to myself, I'd be like, wow, I'm the man. I've squatted 135 kilos I've deadlifted 205 kilos wow that's amazing I'm so good um, but you know then I see someone like John Hack who's actually a, like a lighter body weight than me just destroying those lifts or I'll see like a Chinese female 60 kilo weightlifter squatting 50 kilos above what I can do and I'll just be like oh okay I've got some work to do. I do want to mention that if you are repping 135 kilos in the squat after six months of training, assuming it's to depth, that is certainly above average genetics. I would say uh, that is probably at least top 10% genetics, if not closer to top 1%. I mean, after six months of training, I was nowhere near that. Uh, I think I started out deadlifting 70 or 80 kilos, uh, squatting maybe 60 kilos, and on, I, I couldn't bench 60 kilos when I started, um, just because I had been distance running, and um, I just wasn't particularly strong. I also want to point out that I have never referred to myself as strong. Uh, in any of my thousand or more Quora posts, uh, anything on Medium, anything on YouTube, I don't think I've ever referred to myself as strong because I genuinely believe that I am not strong, at least not yet. Uh, maybe if I get like 20 or 30% stronger, I'll have the confidence to say, I am a strong person. Uh, but as of right now, I certainly am not. Also, if you don't want to take my advice or don't want to watch my videos or don't want me as a coach because of my less than stellar squat, no hard feelings at all. I completely understand. If I saw someone and I saw them like only squatting two and a half or three plates and then them like trying to say they're a master of the squat or like they're a super awesome coach, I would probably feel, you know, I would question that. I would say, okay, well, you clearly don't have that good of a squat yourself. Like, what's up, bro? What's up? What's up? And I do understand there is a lot of pressure for YouTubers to appear to be very, very strong, perhaps even stronger than they are. But I think it's also better to be transparent and be open about things uh, just because I think that's a better way to do it. I think it's better to be honest, whether it's my squat or my diet or my training or how I set things up or why I'm doing lunges with just body weight. You know, why am I doing what I'm doing? And, you know, what I'm doing to plan on how to get better. So for me, the main thing on how I increase my strength is practicing the movement. Now this is hard to do at some points. Like if my hips are really, really bad, it's hard to practice the specific skill of squatting. Uh, I would like to squat as often as possible, and I get good results from doing that when I can stay healthy, but it's difficult to you know keep everything moving. So for me, mobility work is very, very useful. So uh, body weight lunges are certainly a good way to get blood in the hips, get blood in the labrums, in that whole area. In general, if you have a problem area, doing more volume and less super heavy lifting could be a good way to help your recovery. Furthermore, look at your technique. So my technique when squatting is certainly not perfect. This is partly because I haven't squatted heavy in a long, long time because of coronavirus and then no power rack syndrome. And um, I'm sort of just like feeling the weight and getting, you know, we used to where my hips are and, and how to sort of fire everything to move the load. 
if I really wanted to squat the most weight possible, I would do low bar and I would do pretty high frequency low bar. Uh, just for me, that tends to really beat up that problem area. So assess why you want to be strong. Uh, is it you know, for yourself? Is it for the internet? Is it to make your friends happy? Uh, why? You know, why do you want to get better at these lifts? So if you do genuinely want to get stronger at a certain few lifts, practice them more, but also know your body and know what you can do in the long term to stay healthy. And that might be mobility work, that might be prehab, that might be changing your technique, but find out what you need to do to stay healthy and attack your personal bests in the long term. This might be periodization, uh, this might be careful planning, this might be coaching. It could be a lot of factors. There are many factors that go into a maximum performance. Ultimately, you need to find out what works for yourself. For me, I've been lifting five or six years, and I'm sort of finally figuring out over the past couple of years what works for me, at least from a hypertrophy standpoint. From a strength standpoint, I'm still sort of figuring that out. I'm still experimenting, I'm still reading a lot, uh, old Russian strength manuals, uh, any kind of blog posts or anything that I can get my hands on, and I'm still learning. You know, I'm not a guru. This is something that I'm still trying to figure out. And, you know, it, it does take a few years for a lot of people. If you're genetically gifted, you might get it right away. You might not need to really sort through the details and figure everything out. But for most people, that's not going to be the case. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I am an open book as always. Stay safe wherever you are. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.